Uh, thank you for having me here today. Uh, so environmental filtering is the process where the abiotic environment acts to filter regional species pools into communities. So that species with similar niche requirements will cluster together in space. This is an integral mechanism determining broad scale patterns of biodiversity. However, climate change may act to disrupt this process through asymmetric rain shifting rates and novel species interactions resulting in local exclusions thus disrupting clear patterns of environmental filtering and making it hard to distinguish the biological mechanisms, mechanisms at play. Northeast Scotland is one area heavily influenced by climate change driven rain shifting species and where this disruption may be visible. Here, Odonata communities are rapidly changing because of the colonization of two species, Ishnura elegans, and more recently, Sanaguam puella. To establish if colonization of these two species is disrupting patterns of environmental filtering, I studied damselfly communities in northeast Scotland, uh, visiting 94 sites between May and July in 2014 with site revisits. And these sites encompassed the colonization gradients of both Ishinura elegans and Snagman Puella. At each site, I collected the abundance data of all species there for uh, six species of damselflies. And we've also collected the lower thermal tolerance for all six species uh, in that local regional species pool. Using PAM analysis, a multivariate analysis that allows for identification of structure within data sets, I identified six clusters within the damselfly community data. So you see uh, these green ones, these light blue ones, orange ones, it's got some red, red, yellow, and dark blue, which are more specialized. And what we see is that uh, these communities appear to be loosely spatially correlated. So we see this uh, dark green cluster is associated with low elevation sites. We also see uh, this orange cluster associated with high elevation sites. We also see this uh, light blue cluster is associated uh, with a, a generalist um, community. When we consider the species compositions of each cluster, we see uh, some of the partitioning is driven by the presence of Ishinura elegans and Snagman puella. So we see here, cluster three, um, we have high density of Ishinura, and cluster five, we have high uh, densities of Snagman puella. However, we actually see that climate is the driving process determining each of the cluster. When we consider temperature here on the left and uh, precipitation here on the right, uh, we see strong partitioning between the clusters. So these high elevation sites associated uh, with colder, wetter climates, while these uh, uh, low elevation sites associated with the colonization of Ishinura and Sanagua and Puella are uh, warmer and dry. Thomas, and, and uh, thank you for everyone for joining this early in the morning. That, I have... uh, the turnover of species is driven by climatic drivers. Thank you very much, Moreover, Thomas, and, and uh, thank you for everyone for joining this early in the morning. I have really look forward we to talk to you. We see a strong relationship with temperature. So what you're looking at here is the average lower thermal tolerance of all of the species within each community. So each point represents a community. And then we take um, for the lower thermal tolerance for all of those species. We weight it by their abundance within that community. And we, we draw an average across that. And what we see here is a positive, a significant positive relationship with temperature. So at these colder sites, we're seeing a uh, exclusion of species that are not cold tolerant. And this is becoming relaxed as we move to warmer sites where we see these uh, cold intolerant species becoming more present. This has suggested that species niche traits are important in driving the species composition at the community level. This is really, uh, oops, um, so what we're seeing here is damselfly communities in northeast Scotland are strongly structured by climate, and that species niche traits are driving the uh, community structure. This is suggesting that environmental filtering is the dominant mechanism at play here. Moreover, we're seeing that the colonization of the two species, Ishnura elegans and Snagpuel, is not strongly disrupting environmental filtering. This is a really important result as it means that uh, we can detect these mechanistic processes over landscape scales, even when biodiversity is in a state of flux. Just like to conclude by thanking everyone who uh, helped with collecting the data and uh, especially Leslie, who's been providing me with additional data ever since I've left their group. And uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions and uh, my emails up there um, if I'm not responding to Slack. Thank you very much.
Awesome. Thank you. You were perfectly on five minutes. Um, I have a question. Um, how do you measure thermal tolerance in damselflies? Uh, yeah, so uh, what we do is uh, you put them in a uh, water bath and you either heat up the water bath or you cool it down for lower cold, cold tolerance. You just wait until they're knocked out. So it's the, uh, it's the standard uh, lower thermal tolerance knockout experiment. Uh, okay. Um, and we have a question from Tom. He says, great talk. Um, which tolerant, oh, sorry, that's the same question I just asked. <laughs> Which tolerance metrics did you use, upper, lower, dynamic estimates? Yeah, so it's just a, a, a lower knockout temperature. Yeah. Um, and a question from Natalie. She says, do you think you'd get the same results elsewhere or is Scotland special? Um, yeah, so I've since moved away from Scotland to see um, further down south and I'm now based in Liverpool. Uh, I have sort of anecdotally looked at the damselfly communities down here and they're much more um, heavily um, related to the Sinagrum puella, which is a warm, is a, a, a warm to tolerant species. So, um, yeah, I think this is a generalistic mechanism that's going to be uh, yeah. in, um, beyond northeast Scotland. And another question from Jacinta: How much variation in thermal tolerance did you see within communities? Um, so uh, I can't give you exact figures off the top of my head, but um, within communities, it's a, a, a couple of degrees centigrade. Um, so I think uh, some of the species for the lower species uh, is um, the, the, they went down to about two degrees C, where some species like less responsive, which is not cold tolerant at all, was not out around six degrees C. Mm -hmm. um there's another question in the chat for you, but we best move on to keep with time. Um, but thank you, Rob. That was really good. Um, next, 